everybody, welcome to 3 Minute Thursdays, your favorite source of animal rights news and gossip, all packed in 3 minutes. That actually is not going to be 3 minutes on your favorite day of Thursday. I'm back, I'm back home in the Pacific Northwest. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's raining and it's beautiful. It's gorgeous, I love it. People are always like, how can you stand to live in the rain in the Pacific Northwest? Well, that's why, because it's beautiful. You get to see the seasons change, you get to see your world change around you, animals, nature, all sorts of things. It's pretty great. Also, big news for Are We Winning fans, um, season 2 is over. I decided to just kind of like cut it and swipe it aside and start season three in a couple weeks and why I don't know I have no idea but I got big things to talk about right I'm gonna be talking about grassroots animal rights quote-unquote leaders I'm gonna be talking about post veganism I'm gonna be talking about flying I'm gonna be talking about patreons I'm gonna be talking about all sorts of fun and exciting things guaranteed to irritate you and make you a little bit more cranky and I'm gonna be cranking up the crank as well I know you're excited best way to keep up with that stuff is of course subscribe hit that subscribe button turn on that little bell thank you very much get that done you'll be getting those emails directly to you when those videos come out traveling was fantastic I went all over Europe I did about 13 or 14 talks and did a couple new talks did a couple old talks did a couple trainings in New York City people always ask me how do you pack for two months into one carry-on bag well this is how <laughs> That's terribly exciting. All right, let's put three minutes on the clock and here we go. I don't even know if I wanna be doing this first story because I don't want people to think I'm always picking on one or two people, but it's hard not to pick on one or two people when they're doing such crazy stuff. The other question that I get asked all the time is how do you avoid burnout? Well, I've made a video about it, you can check it out, but the best and fastest thing you could probably do is stop following people like James Aspie into a slaughterhouse. If you're vegan and you're an animal rights activist, you don't need to see it, I promise you, you don't. If you want to, go on Google, Google and slaughterhouses, a whole mess of videos, a whole mess of articles will already come up. You don't need to be following him on an Instagram live feed and watching him give lectures in front of dying animals. A large, large majority of his followers are vegans and animal rights activists. He's shouting into an echo chamber. But while he's shouting into that echo chamber, he's making you all feel like garbage. I know everyone's talking about it, but do we really need weird selfies in front of animals being slaughtered? And his quote of like, don't be mad at me because I'm just standing here, this is actually all your fault, is just bizarre. He follows it up with the classic, I'm sorry. But frankly, you should be sorry. You're traumatizing thousands and thousands of people who watch all this stuff day in and day out. I know you get messages from people that are saying, oh, I went vegan because of your videos and that's great. Don't get me wrong. But I get messages from 16 year olds and 17 year olds who are saying, I'm feeling burnt out after doing six months of animal rights activism because I'm feeling traumatized by all the slaughterhouse footage. Great, make a couple vegans, but you're killing off the animal rights movement by traumatizing people left and right. And this isn't just a finger point at James, I'm sure he's well intentioned. To be quite honest, I would love to sit down and talk with James and talk about strategies and ideas and how we could be more creative in making change for animals. But unfortunately, he broke up with me. Is being blocked by James Aspie a badge of honor? But anyway, honestly, I know I can come off as a cranky dick now and again, or most of the time, let's be honest. But any of these people that travel around the world talking to vegans about why they should be vegan want to chat about maybe doing things a little differently, maybe chatting about strategies and how we can start making lasting change for animals in this world, I'm happy to do it. The door is always open. The email is always open. Get in touch. Let's hang out. Let's party. All right, let's get on to some real news because that was kind of the gossip section of Three Minute Thursday, but let's get on to the real news. California becomes the first state in the United States to ban the sale of furs. I think that's pretty exciting. I know we got back and forths about bans and whatnot, so I'm looking at you, Roger Yates, but I do think uh, this is a positive one. The bill makes it illegal to sell, donate, or manufacture new furs in the state of California with exemptions for uh, taxidermy and religious uses, including indigenous communities. Over the course of the coming weeks, I'm sure we'll hear all about the groups that have been pushing for this ban in the last couple years doing the work to get it done, and of course, tip of the hat, great job. But let's not forget that this fight against fur in California has been going on for literally decades. People in the 80s going after Macy's West in California, getting them to remove fur. People have been arrested dozens and dozens of times in front of fur stores throughout the state of California. The hard-hitting campaign against Neiman Marcus in San Francisco and Los Angeles pressuring them to drop fur. People that have been arrested for civil disobedience. People that are arrested for nonviolent direct action. The Animal Liberation Front that's been raiding farms in California 
California and releasing fur-bearing animals back into the wild, um, smashing out windows of Neiman Marcus. The Animal Rights Direct Action Coalition in the 90s who organized a sit-in in front of Neiman Marcus where they got over 200 people arrested over the course of two days. And when the animal rights movement insisted that we all work on animals on factory farms instead of animals on fur farms and in laboratories, people like Anita Carswell still went out and protested against fur, handing out literature in front of places like Neiman Marcus. Sometimes by herself, standing there week after week after week doing the hard work to keep fur an issue in the state of California. So while it's great that the California ban happened, it's great that these current organizations pushed for it and did the hard work to get it done, but let's not forget this doesn't exist within a bubble. There's been decades and decades of animal rights activists doing really hard work, giving up a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of resources, and their own personal safety and freedom in order to push back against the fur industry in the state of California and around the country and around the world. And we're starting to see it come to fruition. So while we celebrate, let's make sure we celebrate everyone who fought against fur in the state of California. Thank you all for doing the work. I'm happy that it's paying off. Okay, y'all, three minute Thursdays. Fairly confident that went over three minutes. Feel a little extra cranky back home. I guess I should actually unpack and do some laundry before heading out in the next few days to go to Austin, Texas for uh, the premiere of the documentary, The Animal People, executive produced by Joaquin Phoenix about uh, myself and my co-defendants in the Shack 7 trial and the Shack campaign in the United States. It's pretty good. I enjoyed the film. Definitely check it out when it comes out. I will keep you up to date on all that good news. But until then, keep fighting. Thank you.